Hi, my name is Dr. Kyle Stanley. I am originally from Southern California and I have stayed here. I went to USC where I completed a mini residency with Dr. Pascal Manier. While I was studying with Pascal, I told him that I wanted to learn implants. So he said, you have to learn Portuguese and you have to move to Brazil. So I said, okay. So I moved to Brazil. I did an implant specialty and an implant residency down there where we did everything from start to finish implants, um, both surgical and restorative aspect. When I came back, I was teaching again at USC with Pascal Manier, and it was at that point that he introduced me to Dr. Sasha Jovanovich. So at this point, I have my two mentors, Dr. Pascal Manier, Dr. Sasha Jovanovich, and I have become someone who focuses on both aesthetics and implants, and those are really the loves of my dental life. Some of the biggest technological advances that have changed my practice, um, number one, I would say, is digital dentistry, and that has everything to do from um, the Noble Clinician software that I helped develop with Dr. Jovanovic, where we can place implants digitally, plan everything restoratively, have uh, a smaller surgical time, and better outcomes. It's also really fun. I mean, it's like a, a video game, planning how to do surgeries before we go into the room. Another thing that's changed how I practice is biomimetic dentistry. I learned this from Dr. Manye, and we can recreate lifelike restorations that function like teeth, that look like teeth, and that move like teeth, um, that also are beautiful. And that's kind of the last thing about them, is that we make them look good, we make them feel good, and they last long, just like a natural tooth. Digital smile design has definitely changed how I practice and how many of us practice now because we're trying to do everything to where we start with the end in mind. Now this has to do with digital smile design, this has to do with noble clinician software and guided surgery. We can tell the patient predictably what they're going to have, whether it's six months or a year down the road. With digital smile design, we can see how, it, how the teeth match up with the lower lip. Um, we, although we can't test function, we can get an aesthetic outcome and then test that in the mouth with something like a mock-up or a provisional. So we can get better outcomes and know what we're getting into before we start a treatment. I would say implant dentistry is changing to where, you know, the first 40 years of implant dentistry were trying to get an implant to osseointegrate. And we have figured that out and, you know, we have a very high success rate on getting implants to integrate. Now we have to figure out, and where kind of a lot of research is going, is how do we get them to stay there? How do we get them to look good? How is the tissue going to stay? So we're going to more of a periimplantitis way of doing it. The other thing that I'm seeing a lot is better communication between the surgical aspect of implants and the restorative aspect of implants. I think back in the day, it was very separated. You do the surgery, you do the restoration. Now, although two people can still do the restoration, with digital aspects of dentistry, we can communicate we can send things across the world to our colleagues and say, hey, take a look at this. What do you think? And we're getting such better results because of the communication. You know, everything's driven restoratively, and then we plan backwards. Yeah, patient understanding and acceptance is something that we've been working on for a long time, and I think with the digital aspects, when people can hold something in their hand and you show them, this is how we're planning your smile to be, they get a better idea and when you show them something like Noble Clinician where they're seeing their skull in three dimensions moving, they understand how much technology we have and I think they really know what level that we're going to create in their restoration. This helps with their acceptance. You know, when, when they can see something, they understand that we know what we're doing and they can see the end in mind because you can tell them, yeah, we're going to lengthen this tooth or we're going to make them brighter or something, but when you can show them on an iPad and they can hold it and you've done digital smile design, they really get the idea of what's going to happen and they're more likely to say, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you know, things are different in Brazil. Um, there's good and bad parts about really every country. When I was in Brazil, one thing that I really loved was that it's very restoratively driven. They have an implant specialty in Brazil to where you get this implant specialty and usually these people are doing both the restorative and the surgical aspect of the treatment and I feel like when you're doing that or at least if two different people are doing it if there's a better communication you have better, better overall outcomes you know you're planning 
the implant placement in a three-dimensional placement where you want to restore it. If it needs to be screw retained, um, you know, where the papillas are going to be, all that can be planned beforehand. And I think that was a, a really positive thing about um, dentistry in Brazil. Another thing with dentistry in Brazil is that there's so much research going on. It seems like it's a little bit easier to do research in that area to get um, ethical approval and going through the universities. Although it's still a difficult process, it seems like more things are getting approved. So they can do better research and really get a lot of great results for clinicians. Yeah, digital dentistry has definitely changed everything for me. I'm trying to do as much digital as possible. Um, I already mentioned Noble Clinician, I already mentioned Digital Smile Design, and the last thing would be using CEREC machines. Um, you know, when I just published an article with Dr. Manye um, a year or so ago where we can make ultra-thin occlusal veneers on posterior teeth that have had severe erosion, and this wouldn't be possible unless we can mill the material through a CEREC machine. And we can make them super thin, 0.6 millimeters, to where we don't have to take away as much tooth structure. We can get very long-lasting results because we can bond to the tooth. If we didn't have those milled digital techniques, we wouldn't be able to give such minimally invasive um, restorative outcomes. Biomimetic dentistry really means a lifelike copy. We're trying to mimic what's happening in nature. I mean, the tooth was divinely designed to where, you know, it takes about 10 years for a final, for a, um, a permanent tooth to develop, and we think that we can just do it in two weeks. No, we really have to, we really have to try. So with all of this research, we've been able to get increased bond strengths to 400, 500 percent that are bonding to a natural tooth, the same way that the dentin is actually bonded to the enamel. We can get better tissue results because we don't have to go subgingival like with the, with the crown. We can save more teeth with biomimetic dentistry. Ultimately, we have a natural tooth in mind. Through years of research, we've been able to somewhat recreate natural teeth. Well, I'm kind of partial to USC and our program because they get taught from their first year now dental morphology, function, and aesthetics from Pascal Magne, one of the world leaders. So we're teaching them how to do um, you know, mock-ups, multi-layered mock-ups, wax-ups, and drawings so that they can really understand a natural tooth bef before they go to the next step. So I think that there's many amazing programs. The great thing about young dentists coming out right now is the access to technology. You know, we're really good with uh, computers, we're really good with doing digital dentistry, so you're getting more digital smile designs, you're getting more guided surgery, this type of thing that's really increasing our success rates. And so it's a lot easier to be a better dentist when you have access to these technologies. And I think it's, it's amazing. There's some fantastic young clinicians in you know, their mid-30s, that early 30s even, that are coming out of school and blowing people away. And a lot of it has to do with access to technology and hard work. Again, with young dentists and with digital dentistry together, there's easier technology to communicate across the world. I mean, here at the Guide Center, we talk to our colleagues in Russia, in Italy, in Brazil, um, all digitally, whether it's through Skype or whether it's through um, Nobel Connect, that we can plan cases from around the world. I mean, even just the simple email, when you think of how amazing email is, back in the day when we didn't have something like that, to be able to show photos and send something and get it back instantly, our treatment plan success can just go through the roof with this. So in the last few years, there's been some amazing research that happened at USC with um, some of our team. And they've been able to take biomimetic dentistry and implant dentistry and put them together. And I won't get fully into the, into the research, but we've been able to recreate an implant restoration that functions like a natural tooth in the sense of how it moves. It almost functions like it has a periodontal ligament. So we've been able to get the same amount of movement with an implant crown as we have with a natural tooth. Now what this does is that it causes less stress to go to the bone. So you're going to have less periimplantitis, less bone loss, um, better aesthetic outcome. So we will be testing some more clinically now um, and that's being done in Brazil, in Florianopolis, Brazil, where I did my residency. One of my students will be heading that alongside me and Dr. Manye down in Brazil, so stay tuned.
Brazil has been doing so much research and the other thing with my residency was that the patients only pay for the parts. They don't pay for the actual surgery. So instead of going in and saying, you know, you need six implants on the bottom, they said, well, I can't really pay for it. Like it would be maybe in a university or a private practice here in the US. At the university in Brazil, they only pay for the part. So it's a lot cheaper, so we can do better treatment. So instead of placing two implants and doing an overdenture, we can do six implants and do a full hybrid, um, you know, almost like a, an all on four type, type restoration. So it allows us to do, there's also more patients too that are waiting down there. So when I went down there, there was just so many patients waiting to have treatment that as residents, we have more options of doing more treatment and doing better treatment. All right, one of my biggest hobbies is my English Bulldog. I'm in charge of the Los Angeles English Bulldog Meetup Group, where we get together with anywhere from 20 to 80 English Bulldogs in Hollywood. And uh, we meet at the beach sometimes, we meet at the park, but we're all in love with our Bulldogs. Uh, the second thing I'm really into is uh, modern design. So whether it's mid-century modern architecture or modern interior design, I've really always had an interest for the design aspect and really got into architecture recently. And then the last thing is surfing. I, I love surfing. I love living in Southern California. I love the sun. And uh, although I try to stay out of it, but yeah, surfing. Whenever I can be on a wave, I'm, I'm happy. I do, yeah. So I was a musician for many years. I um, traveled around in a band and, you know, wrote records and this type of thing. So it was, uh, it was a fun time in my life. I had hair down to here and was a big rock and roller. And then, you know, when everyone else was going out and touring, I was studying for dental exams and turned into a dentist. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.